Okay, so this problem is the lead code July challenge is in the lead code July challenge and it's the first problem. It's called Orange and Coins. So I'm going to provide the problem link in the description and I highly recommend all of you guys check out the problem first and try to um, solve it. However, right now I'm just going to go over the solution. So we can see that we're given n coins and we want to uh, form these coins in like in a staircase formation, we want to see find the total number of full staircase rows. And we can see from here that n might get kind of big and because it's a 32-bit integer. So simply just doing a brute force solution where we see go through each row and see if um, that row can contain the number of coins. This solution will not work, or at least very quickly because of how big our n can get. So instead, we should try to do a binary search algorithm. And a binary search is especially good if we have something where, like, for example, um, everything to the left of a certain um, point in a like list or array fits one criteria. So this would be one, and this would fit another criteria. And it must be like in this such way, such that it's not like a two is in the middle of ones. So for example, if I want to find the maximum position that a one can be, I can look through this array and I can have like a starting position here and an ending position here. And now I try to find the middle. So let's say that my middle is here. And I want to say, okay, find the maximum index that a one occurs, I can say, I can go here and I can say, okay, I found a one and therefore everything to the left of this, I know will be a one. And now I just need to search for this array right here. And let's say that now, and I, my starting index will now shift to this, to this one right here. And now let's say that my middle is here. Now this is a two right here. And I know that everything to the right over here will be a two. So then the maximum index that a one occurs should be in this. And this we essentially keep on going until we get down to one um, index. So how will this help us solve our current problem? Well, we know that for each row, there has to be n coins in it. So we can say that, for example, um, we have essentially a list here. And each one would be like the num the n row number that we're at. So like one, two, three, four, okay, etc. And we can say, okay, how many coins are in each row? So for example, if I want to try to find like five, and let's say that my index is here, and my other index is here, then I know that, for example or actually we don't need to um, discuss the indexes right now. But like, let's say that this is the first row, the second row, the third row, and the fourth row. Now the first row will have one coin, the second row will have three coins, the third row will have six coins, and the fourth row will have 10 coins. Now, given our five, I know that it has to be in between three and six. And it can't be have three rows, because at this point, we need six coins. So we can essentially use this same type of principle for the binary search in order to solve our current problem. So still, how are we able to get the number of coins in each row? Well, this can actually be found using a very simple mathematical formula. Oh, we know that each row has a specific number of coins. So for example, the first row will have one, the second row will have two, the third row will have three. So how do I know how many coins would be in the n nth row? This can simply be found because we can essentially just flip this over. So let me draw this in a different color actually. Let's draw it in blue. So if we just flip this over, it will look like this. And you can see at this point, 
that we have n rows, n right here, but now we have n plus 1 columns. So this is essentially a rectangle, and the area of a rectangle is n times n plus 1. And then because we um, flip this over, we have to divide it by 2 just to get this segment right here. So we use this formula to find how many coins are in the nth row, and we use the binary search. So we can see from my solution that I have the start as, the, as one row and the end as like n rows. So this is a bit safe, my end, but it's perfectly fine. And now I'm just going to say, while our start is less than our end, I'll skip this portion for now. We find the middle, and we say, how many coins will be in the middle row? And at this point, um, if the number of coins is greater than our n, that means that there are too many coins, or there are too few coins that we have that can be in this row. So we say that our end is equal to middle minus 1. Or else, if we have more than enough coins, so if we have more than enough coins, we'll say that our start is equal to our middle. And obviously, if they're equal, then this is perfectly fine, and we'll just return the middle. So in the end, this will keep on going, and the end and start will be, you get extremely close to each other. So then, once they're just like one away, at this point, we can just see if our end will be greater. So if the number of coins in our end row is greater than what we need, we'll just return the start. And we can guarantee that our start does in fact have, like we have enough coins for the start. Or else, if we do have enough coins for this end row, we'll just return end. So this is esen essentially the entire solution. And we can see from the submission details that my runtime actually is like one of the fastest. It beats 100%. And for memory, it beats like 60%, which it can be improved. But considering that we have a runtime that beats 100%, I think it's perfectly fine. So thank you guys for watching this video on the Code Bakery, and I hope that you guys can watch other videos too. Thanks.